Well, here's a bit of fun. Uh, I'm at my home workshop and uh, I'm about to rip some stones out of a gold looking ring and create a custom setting for one of the stones to install it in a mother of pearl nut I made the other day. I made the mistake of putting out a poll saying, what should I do? And yeah, the result was something difficult that you've never done before, Ben. I crave a challenge. Can be fun. And if you haven't watched the uh, video of me making this uh, solid mother of pearl nut out of an old uh, old knife handle, go to the uh, Crimson Guitars YouTube channel because, uh, well, it's fun. Nice looking ring. Definitely not gold. And one of those stones is exactly the size I need. Come on, baby. Ah, so it turns out that the crimson fret pulling pliers, because they flush, cut, etc., are actually perfect for this. So just try and get in there and not damage things unnecessarily, i.e. I don't want to damage the stones, but uh, I do want to get them out. Nope. Okay. So I got that one out. This requires a bit of a push. And then it should just pop out. Anyway, because I'm doing this, I'm learning the process. I didn't need to get all of the stones out, but uh, I do want to use them in other things, side dots, for example. So uh, as part of this video, I'm just going to uh, take them all off and end up with some things in stock. Done. What is the proper tool to do this? Let me know in the, uh, in the comments, please. Uh, normally with rings and things like that, you should have a hole behind it to allow light to get to the stones. Uh, with this kind of setting, because it's gonna be set inside the nut, uh, I wanna get as much light that comes through the stone re-reflected back in, and that's what all the facets are for, etc. So, yeah. Does it sound like I know what I'm talking about? That's YouTube for you people. I, at best, I'm about halfway there. Uh, anyhow, before I carry on playing around with the stone, I need to uh, actually manipulate the setting, which means I need to braise something onto the back, braise, silver salt or something onto the back so that I can uh, work with it effectively. I am only doing this because I enjoy playing with fire, basically. Let's just face it, yeah. Okay, so I want, there we go. I want an earring, and I'm going to take the shaft of the earring. Oh, look, that earring's got a little cup that I could have quite easily turned into uh, what we've been making this whole video. Not only is this going to make it easier for me to work this and get the stone, etc., this will then be drilled into further into the uh, nut, uh, because just gluing a cup in there is a little bit uh, dicey. So this is a uh, pre-mixed silver solder stuff that is basically easy. I'm not using a flux or anything like that because I don't really know how at this stage. Or I haven't I haven't played enough with that. 
So the silver solder's in place. I've got this held in some forceps, so they're locked. And if this works, the whole thing should uh, stick together with a little bit of heat. So warm the whole thing up, watching for the solder to flow. And there we go. We have a little cup on a stick. Woohoo. Now, now I can work with things. So, clean up the silver, clean off the crap, and polish the inside so it goes all nice and shiny. I'll tell you, these little crimson sanding sticks are just the dog's danglies. Mutt's nuts, the... Can you tell I'm working late at night at home when I'm supposed to actually be doing something else, like, you know, sleeping? Of course, when sandpaper itself is fiddly and difficult to work with, you can get the stuff that sandpaper is made out of. I've got some uh, 400 grit carborundum uh, powder here and a little Dremel doohickey. And with this, dipped either in oil or actually just a little bit of water, uh, the uh, the cotton will become impregnated with the uh, carborundum and that will stick just enough to start sanding and polishing things away. Come on then. Uh, but this is how old um, strops were uh, made. You'd uh, uh, put three in one oil on it or something like that uh, or what, pig fat maybe, and then a little bit of an abrasive and that would become impregnated into the leather and yeah stay there forever <laughs> of course i did way more than was required i'm gonna put this in a vice this is a, a gorgeous old victorian fly fisherman's vice for for holding the flies when you're tying them. Pretty cool tool. I love old tools. You may have noticed. Who needs a rotary tool, hey? Genuinely having fun. I need a rotary tool, but I got one. Okay, so that wasn't actually going fast enough. Uh, it wasn't quite abrasive enough, it didn't have the speed. So, hand drill it is. Starting to get shiny. And then I go up through the grits. And I'm gonna end up on some, uh, some polish actually. I've got a little bit of Judas Rouge here. So here we go, we've got a fresh one. And just put some polishing compound on it. Not sure if I'm going to get quite enough speed on this, but it's worth a look, isn't it? Yes, Ben, let's do something that you've never done before and 
handicap yourself by only using hand tools. That appears to be working. Oh, hell yes. All right, getting there. This is a little bit of, uh, okay, this is a lot of, uh, crap, come on, oh my God. Far too much. Wow, I look like a numpty. This is Gold and Silver Polish by Autosol. You know I love that company. I'm going to use the same thing. It's not necessarily best practice, but... The shape doesn't quite match up, which is why I'm rolling it around. I don't want to break it off the stem or the uh, stud. That is starting to shine up. It really is. Fun times. Okay, I'm going to off camera carry on doing this. This place is starting to look like a bomb site. All right, so the uh, the tip of my little felt polishing doohickey there has compressed. It's not getting right down into the very uh, bottom, the back of our little cup shape here. So I have raided the kitchen and this is where you We've become complacent. We're so used to going out and buying the tool that we require. And in this case, it's probably a relatively expensive uh, custom-made felt tip teardrop thing from Dremel. And because it's Dremel branded, it's five times the price. I, you know, these things aren't necessary, necessary. Watchmakers a few hundred years ago were able to make a chain picture a bicycle chain that is three tenths of a millimeter thick. They were able to do that stuff with hand tools. And to this day, watch parts are polished with little bits of stick stuck in polishing uh, media. So I'm just going to shape the end of this with yet again, my trusty crimson sanding stick. And I'm gonna use this in the drill to polish. Only this time I'm going to stick it in like that. Yeah, I should have put it in the drill first. Fight me in the comments. Et voilà. My stick isn't quite the right shape, so I'm gonna put a pad of tissue, relatively thick, relatively thick, but not that thick. There you go, in the cup. And then I'm gonna use that. The tissue is gonna to conform to the internal shape and polish things up. hopefully to perfection. And only in about 40 or 50 or 100 times longer than it would have taken me to do with modern toolery. I am happy. Happy I am. Next up, uh, cutting down the cup so it's only just bigger than the, uh, than the stone 
folding the edges over, installing it in a nut. Easy. Yeah. Easy. Here we go. So the cup is now rather larger than it needs to be. I'm going to file the edges down and just eke them over the edges of the stone. I'm just going to uh, very carefully, the, the stalk is so delicate, just polish up the edges, clean this all up, and uh, we're going to set this stone. You can buy these pre-made at a factory for pennies, and I've spent hours, but do you know what? I do not begrudge the time. This has been fun. You are never allowed to tell me that I have too many tools. This is pitch. Uh, you're probably not supposed to warm it up with a, an actual flame, but uh, why not? All right, so this warms up. I don't want to heat the, the jewelry up too much. Okay, there we go. As that cools down, I've now got uh, the whole piece supported. There's my little stone and I can work on it without worry, I hope. And yes, I'm fully aware that I've got too many tools. I just don't like to admit it. Okay, so holding the stone down with a piece of uh, stick and essentially I'm just very carefully rounding the edge, teasing it up. The stone is quite delicate, but this is the process. Teasing the metal around and over. Hopefully not breaking anything. Yeah, these uh, folding tools, I could probably do with uh, polishing them up a little bit, but uh, they do the job admirably. So I'm just carefully, carefully rolling the edges over. Just burnishing the edges over. And this is also going to work hard on them and uh, help hold them. There we go.
Is it really a hammer and anvil when you're uh, not really hitting it? I mean, yeah, that's pretty cool. Uh, time to polish and get this in the instrument, or at least the nut. I knew I was pushing my luck too much. I over manipulated the, uh, the stem and that has snapped off. I am not going to uh, rebraze one on. Uh, it'll be fine. Just using some uh, nail polishing uh, sticks to clean up the edge. It is, yeah, we're nearly there. Uh, the rest of it is literally just uh, make sure that the hole fits, put in some super glue and glue this thing in. And uh, yeah, we'll be done. Maybe even epoxy. Super glue, super glue will be fine. It is not as clean or as sexy as I would have liked. Ooh. But it's a first go. Uh, well, let's get gluing, shall we? Just a little bit of polish. Gently. There's a tiny sparkly thing on your screens you can't see it because it's tiny and sparkly. So my takeaway from this is that uh, jewellery making is hard and uh, frankly doing this type of setting rather than the traditional well, this is the traditional one actually, rather than the more common one where the stone is held by four or five bits of metal, uh, this is more difficult. The second you put a little bit too much pressure from one side, uh, the whole thing falls apart. Okay, so the hole wasn't quite deep enough. There's some sort of a glue or something in there. I'm just uh, uh, opening that out a little bit with a slightly smaller drill bit. Mother of Pearl is very, very delicate. Um, Oh, you can hear I've actually hit the material itself now. <laughs> okay, it's a fraction bigger than the hole. So I'm going to have to ease that hole open. I was actually quite worried that I would push fit it in and never be able to get it out again. So that's a good one. That's a good one. Well, there you go. It's a little bit, it's a little bit bigger than the, uh, than the hole I've got. Okay, I'm gonna use a little bit of super glue. I do not actually think it's necessary. Uh, pour it into the lid of the super glue pot and I'm just going to dab a little bit in there. This is gonna be a, a pressure fit that I hope doesn't pop the stone out of the setting. It genuinely might do exactly that. My slippery stick. And this is where I leave well enough alone. The stone is ever so slightly 
uh, at the wrong angle in there. It is picking in the, up the light, etc. If I try and mess around anymore, I'm liable to destroy the thing. Uh, and shattering the stone at this point would just be so sad. Thank you for watching. Click like, subscribe, let me know if you want more of this sort of stuff. Maybe with a, a, a macro lens. Oh, you can just see it there. There we go. Sparkly, baby. Uh, yeah, I need to get a, a macro thing going on here, don't I? Ha! Let's try my phone. Mother of Pearl, baby. That's your official name now, guys. Thanks for watching. See you soon.